favorite Christmas tradition that my family would do every year is we would watch the movie A Christmas Story. Um, it's always super fun, fun with me and my sister, even though sometimes it gets old when you're watching it over and over again. I probably shouldn't have said that, that doesn't sound very Christmassy. Should I do that again? Hi, my name is Jeremiah. Uh, my favorite Christmas tradition is that me and my family we write letters to Jesus for his birthday. We put him in a box, and that's our gift to him. Hi, how are you? I am Susan. I'm Shakita, and this is Chloe. So, I, my one of my favorite family traditions is first of all, we sing Happy Birthday, Jesus. And then we have on our matching pajamas and all the love and the laughter and the basketball. Yeah, my family favorite tradition is just the togetherness of family and just the love. And she opens presents. That's our faith. Merry Christmas. I hope that you guys are having a tremendous Christmas morning. Remember, Jesus is Christmas. We recently saw a play that the ramp did uh, up in Cleveland. And one of my favorite lines of that play was, Jesus is Christmas. He is the reason for Christmas. You don't have to search it out. He is there. He's saying, I came to earth. Jesus came to earth as a baby, as a baby to be born by a virgin because he loves you so much. The fact that Jesus came to earth with a purpose to die for you. Come on. That is such a blessing that Jesus came to die for you so that you could be redeemed back to the Father. Now, I wanted to come to you live from my, my house at Christmas morning to your house. See, I'm so glad that God is not only moving in churches, in auditoriums, in revivals, but God is also moving in homes. I believe today God wants to move in your home. See, you're not just watching this because that's what you're supposed to do. You know, I'm a, I am attend Ramp Church Chattanooga, so I guess I'll tune, tune into the broadcast. No, you have been sent on divine appointment. You're watching this broadcast because God wants to bring revival to your home. He says to you today, I sent my son Jesus to, to be born of a virgin, to die on a cross, to redeem you, to redeem your family to redeem us all so that we could be adopted into God's, as God's children. And, you know, I was reading through some scriptures today, and I was reading through uh, many of the Christmas or, or scriptures that we call the Christmas scriptures because it does tell the Christmas story. And uh, I was looking at Luke. Luke is probably my favorite gospel uh, concerning the Christmas story, because it gives us a lot of details. Now, Matthew gives us details that Luke does not. However, Luke is still my favorite. And I was reading about uh, uh, Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 8, and it says this, and there were in the same country, talking about Bethlehem and Judea, there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night, and lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring unto you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. That means you today. He said, I've got good news for you. Jesus, the angel, was sent to tell of good news for you. 2,000 and some odd years later, that good news is still alive today. Maybe today you're watching this broadcast and you say, it doesn't feel like good news. Maybe you're hurting. Maybe you recently lost someone that, that was very dear to you. Or maybe, you know, you're, you're dealing with marriage problems or you're dealing with, with a, a series of loss. I want to tell you, it is still good news that Jesus Jesus came to earth. God said, I sent Jesus and Jesus chose to come. He chose to come. He gave up the throne. He gave up the crown so that he could come to earth because that's how much he loves you. That is good news, my friend. That is good news. And the, the angel said, I bring unto you glad tidings. And it says, uh, which shall be to my people. For unto you, verse 11 says, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior, 
I love that word savior because it means a deliverer. It means a, a fighter, a warrior. He says a savior, one that redeems you, one that buys you back, one that pays the price for you. A savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude, the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. He has goodwill towards you. He has good thoughts for you, a hope, a future, an expected end. See, <coughs> you can rejoice this Christmas. You say, well, Pastor Andrew, it's not, it doesn't look like what I wanted it to look like. It, it's not my children aren't around or, or maybe you're not married or maybe you uh, suffered some kind of loss. But the fact that Jesus came, he says, there's still goodwill. God has a hope, a future, and an expected end for you. The Bible says that your steps have been ordered of the Lord. That means that God has a plan for your life. No matter what you're going through today, no matter how you're feeling, come on, put those feelings aside because feelings will lead us astray. Feelings will, the enemy can make you feel certain ways. But he said, the joy that I have is everlasting. The joy that I'm giving to you, it's your strength. And it is better than a feeling. It is better than just some uh, feeling of our emotion that you might have in any particular moment. He says, I bring into you joy. I bring into you goodwill. I bring into you good thoughts. I have a hope for you. So today, my prayer is that on this Christmas day, that you will think about what God did for you and how that he gave his son Jesus and brought goodwill to you. And he says, I have a plan for your life. So I want to tell you today, God has a plan for your life. You're not just watching this, uh, just flipping through. No, God wants you to know he has a plan for your life. He has a future for you. He has an expected end for you. He says, you're going to, you're going to see my plan revealed into you. It's going to be revealed into your life. The moment that you surrender your life, just give up your will and say, God, not my will, but your will be done. Today, on this Christmas day, surrender your life and say, God, you know, you can be honest with God. And maybe you're hurting. You can say, God, I feel I'm hurting. He says, I want to heal that hurt. Maybe you can say, God, I'm disappointed. Just I'm disappointed. Things didn't work out like I thought they would. He said, oh, but born to you this day, the day that we celebrate Jesus's birth is goodwill towards men. He said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. I don't want you to live a halfway life. I don't want you to live a broken life. I don't want you to live a downcast life. He said, I anoint, I announced to the shepherds that day through my mighty angels that I have good will towards men. That means you, my friend. He says, I have a good plan for you. I have a good thoughts towards you. I have a hope, a future, and an expected end. Today, as you're spending time with your family, as you're unwrapping gifts, like we're about to unwrap gifts here at our house, I want you to remember the greatest gift that was wrapped in the form of a human baby was given to us, and his name was Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us, or with us is God. He is a strong and mighty God. He is a God that fights for you. He is a God that redeems you. He is the God that loves you. So I want you today from my house to your house, I want you to know God is making a move and he is saying to you today, I want to move in your life. I want you to experience the fullness of my plan. I announce to you, I announce to you, and you say, well, Pastor Andrew, you're not an angel or an angelic host. I know I'm not an angel or an angelic host, but I believe God sent me with the word on this Christmas morning to tell you that God has good thoughts for you.
God has a plan for you. And he, anoint, he announces good tidings for you. So don't give up in the midst of despair. Don't give up and don't give in to those feelings, maybe feeling lonely or maybe feeling despair. Don't give in to those feelings. Begin to fill yourself up with the word of God and know that he has good thoughts for you. He has a good plan for you. And rejoice this Christmas day because you have been given, I have been given the greatest gift that could ever be given. And that was Jesus coming to earth as a baby, grown to a man to die on a cross, to redeem us, to pay sin's price, to redeem us back to the Father. I love you guys. I pray for you. Let me just take a moment and pray for you. Lord, I'm praying right now for, for all of those that are watching this broadcast. I'm asking that your presence begin to fill their car, begin to fill their home, begin to fill their room wherever they're watching this broadcast, and that you make your glory known. I thank you, Lord, that their feelings come into alignment with your plan. I say, God, let their feelings, I rebuke every feeling that is a lie from the enemy. And I say, come into alignment with God's will and God's purpose today. In Jesus' name, you have joy and the joy of the Lord is your strength. Listen, I love you. I rejoice with you. I celebrate with you today. Merry Christmas to all of you from our house to your house. Christmas blessings this morning. I love you and I'll see you again soon. God bless you. Hey guys, it's Pastor Andrew. I am right now in my prayer room. Uh, I thought it'd be uh, very beneficial to be in my prayer room when I come to you and ask you to give a seed to plant a seed into the kingdom of God. Now, we are filled with, with people who are givers. And I wanna thank you for your faithfulness over this year of sowing your tithes and your offerings, sowing your time, volunteering. Thank you so much. It has enabled us to do so many things for the kingdom of God. So many outreaches have been a success because you have been faithful in your giving. Now, the word tells us that we're blessed coming in and we're blessed going out. So in other words, the way you leave one season is the way you will enter into another. And I want us, I want you to finish strong. I want this church to finish strong. This is the last service of 2022. The next year, next service will be 2023. So I want us to end 2022 strong. And this is how you can help us do that. You can plant a seed into the kingdom of God with your tithes and with your offerings. Now, on the information on your, is going to be on your screen. You can find out ways to give. You can write a check and make it payable to Ramp Church. You can bring it by the, the, the office there at the church and, and drop it off. But the easiest way to give is called Smart Giving. You can text RC Chat to the number on your screen and you can give. It'll prompt you for information and you can sow your seed. I believe in God that you are entering into 2023 like you have never entered another year in your life. Let's finish this year, 2022, strong so that we will enter 2023 strong. I thank you for your giving. Thank you so much for being a part of Ramp Church Chattanooga. We love you. Pastor Brooke and I, we love you and we thank God for you. I can't wait to see you in the new year. I pray that you have the best Christmas, the best season ever in Jesus name. I love you guys. to see and
songs employ while fields and flood rocks, hills and plains repeat the sounding joy repeat the sounding joy repeat repeat the sounding joy The nations prove the glories of His righteousness, wonders of His love, and wonders of His love. Oh 